All right, guys, it's time for the next level guy show. A men's interview, interest, and improvement focused podcast featuring interviews with the greats from all industries to help you better your life. Each week, a new episode features an interview with one of the greats, covering all aspects of their story, from life hacks to tips and protocols that have allowed them to live life on the next level. We then highlight concrete action steps that you can use to improve your life. And now, your host, Ian Dawson McKay. Hello and welcome to an episode of Top Tier Talent, a new series where I focus on stars who are top tier prospects in their sport of industry and focus on finding and highlighting the key skills, habits and mindsets that make them so successful. Today's guests are the fabulous Klinger sisters, that's Dorina and Ronja. They are medal winners on the World Tour by State Champions and the youngest team in the National Beach Volleyball, that's Dorina and Ronja Klinger. Remember those names because their ultimate goal is a medal at the Olympic Games and I'm sure that's coming soon. We cover their story, volleyball, skill development, competing, mindset, recovery, their amazing Weird Workout Wednesday and so much more. And now let's get to the interview. Thank you both for coming on. I'm really delighted to have you. You're the first in my new series of top tier talent and you're awesome. You've got a fantastic... Um, social media presence you're taking the volleyball world by storm but for people who don't recognize your names could you give a quick introduction yeah of course okay so we're Dorina and Rania Klinger we're sisters um and yeah we went to college in the U.S. so I went there for four years and Rania for one year and since 2019 we're back in Austria we're playing for a national team here uh we're one out of two teams in our national team and yeah, we played the FWB World Tour and want to make the Olympics one day. So that's our biggest goal. Love it. So what was the inspiration for getting into beach volleyball? You know, you've cross-trained a lot of times. You did multiple sports like athletics and judo and things like that. Why did you go for beach volleyball? It's not often Europeans play sandy sports, shall we say? I think it was a little funny because from um, child on, we always like did a lot of sport, as you said. So it's kind of in our blood, in our body. And then I don't even know, we started tra- training with, um, I think it was 15 or something. Dory started playing indoor volleyball with their school. And she really liked it. And I, I saw her playing and I thought, wow, that, that's such a fun sport. And then we at one point, um, we built up a net on the grass in our garden back home. Like it was really funny. And we played with our family. And then we we're like, okay, this is so much fun. Maybe we should try, try to like get into it professionally. And then we went to a school where we played volleyball and there we kind of found the love and the passion for the sport um and even like playing together as sister it's like the most beautiful the most powerful thing to do and yeah that that's just what what drives us every day yeah definitely (laughs) and how do you manage that now i have a younger sister older brother we would murder (laughs) each other after 10 minutes how do you find that playing with your sister you know, get in because you travel around the world, you were living together, you compete together, you know, you, you bank together. How do you find that being siblings? Do you not try to just go at each other all the whole time or do you find that <laughs> helps your chemistry? Yeah, so I think at the beginning we tried to play together just some tournaments kind of for fun when we were really young. So when we just started playing volleyball, maybe with 16 or something. And it really didn't work out well because we were, you know, still young and fighting a lot just in general, not even on the court. But, you you know, we just always were fighting. Um, and then I left for the U.S. And I think that's kind of when our bond outside of volleyball really grew. And then when I came back, it was like a no brainer. We were like best friends off the court and we were really um, had a good harmony on the court. And I mean, it was perfect because I'm the blocker and she's a defender. So I'm a little taller. So also our whole playing style kind of fits super well together. And I think 
now that we're a little bit older, we're not fighting at all anymore or, or very rarely because we know each other so well and we appreciate each other and like the um, skills of each other and just the personality so much that it's really like just great to play together and travel everywhere because you have to harmonize to just live together 24 seven. You have to be like really close because otherwise I think it's not going to be a fun adventure. Yeah. But this question, a lot of people ask us because they're like, hey, if I do that with my, with my sister or with my brother, I would murder them, literally. <laughs> but it's funny because I think as we grew older, we got into that, okay, we know each other so well that we know how we act and react. So we can kind of, how should I say, like compromise it mm -hmm. and we can see what the other, or we can anticipate what the other person is doing. So if something happens, then, for example, I already know like how to act that makes story calm or, or like reverse. So, and I think that's really cool that we know each other and we know how to deal with it, with each other. Yeah, I think now we can really profit off of it because I kind of know what she needs on the court and also off the court. And we know how to help each other out when like times aren't as good. And I think that's like so valuable to learn and to understand about your partner or the other person. And it really makes the whole game and just the whole life so much better. I love that because it certainly comes across in your social media, the bond that you've got, the fun that you have. If it's, you know, training, if it's the weird workout Wednesdays you do, I mean, they're awesome. Can you, go into little, can you go into a little bit about, about your training? Because you seem to do a lot of sports specific stuff, but you also do mobility, agility. You do therapy stuff. You do insane like ab workouts in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> What, what's a normal training week? Is there such a thing for you guys? Um, yes, kind of. I mean, now it's different that we're on the training camp here, but usually we have about two trainings a day. Um, it's either two volleyball-specific trainings, so on the court, or one volleyball training and one um, weightlifting or cardio training. Um, so in total, Sundays is always off, but every other day we really work out. And um, yeah, I mean, it's a really tough uh, training schedule. That's why we try to have fun in between, it, especially when we're like warming up or doing like core exercises. And yeah, we just try to be creative. We're both like super creative people. And I think that's a good way to kind of get all that creativity out. <laughs> and, I think, and I think with our Insta, what we show the people is actually how we are. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. some Instagrams are like, okay, they just made that to like, how should I say, to um, inform maybe the audience what they're doing or maybe even like um, cheer the audience up. But for us, it's like, no, we, we just do what we do and we post it and then let's <laughs> see if we get feedback, cool, if not, but we want it to be really authentic. So I yeah. think that's really cool for us to get the creativity out like that. And um, apart from like our normal training, we do a lot of um, shoulder, shoulder and knee therapy stuff mm -hmm. because, of course, in volleyball, the shoulder is always used. And it's really, really important to like have the small muscles in the shoulder strengthen in the right amount because it's so much load of like, sh of, like hitting and attacking and serving that you have to kind of compensate it. I mean, it's certainly something that, you know, when you watch your weird uh, workouts, for example, you know, like, for example, there was one where you were juggling two balls at once, then did a backflip off a diving board. <laughs> Maybe not the traditional way of doing this, but do you think that creativity, that kind of fun, the expression helps you when you go to do your training because you're more creative in your approach in the match and how you spike and how you kind of set things up and you know, these kind of mindsets. Do you think the creativity helps you? Yes, I definitely think so. Um, I think that helps us a lot because, you know, volleyball, you always want to evolve and you want to do things better than other teams. And also what we want to try on working in the future is getting that more on the court to have like not your um, regular style of volleyball, but to change things up so like people can adapt that quickly. And that's a goal of ours in the future. But for now, I mean, we both started beach volleyball kind of late. So we're trying to um, make the basics perfect first and then try to be like a little more creative with our like game plans and just 
um, yeah, different ways of hitting and stuff like that. And yeah, that's definitely a goal for the future. And I think the creative workouts really help us to like have fun and just, you know, go with the flow and do what we enjoy doing. Because it is awesome. Like when you watch it and then you see you guys doing st- in the marches and you think they would be a great laugh to play, you know, to train with, to play with, to do this sort of stuff. And I think that's, it's the fun and passion that you have really comes through in your social media, on your website. You know, you you live volleyball and you are the same people on and off camera. But yeah. how do you find, like you've said on your website that all your being is to go to the Olympic Games. You train every day. You want to get there. That's the ultimate goal. What is it? Where do you get that drive and that consistency from to go and do these like two day sessions every day? How do you keep yourself motivated? Um, I think most of the part is the vision that we have together because we have such a strong bond. We have such a strong, how should I say, um, route to follow, right? That this connection that we have and this goal and this vision that we have like cannot separate anything it's so strong that i think that's always what we have in our background we we give everything we're together we have each other we're sisters we're family it's such such a different bond to um other connections or to other stuff in life that we can really get back to that every time we feel down or every time we have like a setback or something like that. Yeah. And I also think it's uh, what is really cool is that, yeah, we have the same goals separately. So we, we both want to reach the goal, but also our way on how to accomplish it is the same. So just mindset wise, we have the same mindset. We both think alike on how to achieve this goal, which is like, through hard work and just to show up every day, even if you don't feel like it. And that really pushes you because if you have a partner that's more like, oh, I do it because it's fun or because I'm good at it and I have a really good talent at it, but I don't want to put 110% in it every day, then I think it's hard to like deal with that. But with Ronnie, I know she's exactly on the same page as me. And if I ever like slack, she will tell me and she will motivate me and she'll be like, hey, only one more set and then we're done. We got this. Let's use this last set to just get better or something like that because she knows me so well. And that's really motivating no matter in, in what like mindset you are at the moment. I love that. I love how you can sort of, you know what the other person needs. You can just pick up on the symptoms and just go... I think my sister would say it not very nicely to me if we were doing it. But I like how you have that motivation. You know, you kind of play off each other. You feel, you know, you get the vibe, the passion from each other. So you work with a mindset coach, you know, and you do like cold baths and things like that. And you do, you know, like your mindset training before the the season starts. What kind of things do you do? Because you both seem so sort of phenomenally focused and strong minded. And, you know, you're you're taking the, the volleyball world by storm. But what does the mindset training do for you? How does it help you? Um, okay, thank you, first of all, for that compliment. We appreciate it because the last two years, um, we kind of learned how important the mental um, aspect of the whole game is. It's mm. insane and it's still so, so, so much more to learn because in the end, all really, really, really top 10 teams play the same and it's a lot mental Mm -hmm. um but what we do with our mental coach basically is that we don't go to him only if we're having a problem we actually have trainings weekly which whatever we do there we 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 try to focus on the process we try not to be too like outcome oriented because we still have to learn and stuff like that we visualize we meditate whatever we do but we learn that we have to do it consistently like we do physical training like we do b12 training we have to do mental training um on a regular basis to like grow that mental part because if you only go to our mental coach or to, yeah, if you only want to talk to the mental coach, if you're having problems, that's not how it should be. It should be like the prevention to something. If some something comes up in the mind, if you're feeling doubt, if you're feeling pressure, if you're under a lot of stress, stress to have the um, 
to have the skills, skills yes, or tools, tools exactly to deal with that. I like it. The older sister jumping in with the comments there. <laughs> <laughs> and do you find that helps, like, overcome pretty much nerves? Do you find that, um, you know, with dealing with losses, you know, has he taught you to look at things as a learning experience and, you know, to kind of utilize it and become stronger? Because you just seem to keep coming back stronger and stronger after injuries, after competitions, after COVID. How, you know, where, yeah. where does that mental strength come from, do you think? Yeah, I think definitely that our um, mental training coach is a big part of it because at the beginning, we only thought of it, as Ronnie said, as like, um, okay, we're having a problem in the team or in the playing or with nerves. And then we talk to someone and then that's it. But that's really not how it works at all. It's You have to build it little by little. And mm -hmm. Especially with nerves, for example, it's not going to go away if you practice it once or twice. Like, no, that's not how it works because your body is uh, under stressful situation. You can't just like shut it off and expect to be good after talking to a psychologist once or something. No, it's like little steps on how to like deal a little better or even how to accept nerves or stress as part of the game because it's going to happen and it's maybe going to happen at a point where you can't really control it or you don't know why it's happening because it's not even that crazy of a game or something but sometimes it just happens and you have to accept it and like deal with how it is and understand that you can still perform even if you're under stress even if your nerves are really badly you can still perform at your level and i think that was a big part we worked on and um a lot of vis visualizing after injuries because if you can't um, do a specific exercise after injury because for example your shoulder is still not ready to do it um, that's still um, one part of how to stay in a game and how to better your game by not being able to actually do it and um, yeah I think these are two things that are super important and coming back after losses for sure I mean of course you're gonna have your time where you need to like be a little sad and upset but I think that's a beautiful part and that's good too because then you know how much it means to you. Like if you would go out of a loss and you'd be like, okay, whatever, then it's not going to mean as much to you and you're not going to work as hard on your goal as if you, as if a loss really bothered you because you want to be better and you want to play well. And yeah, I think that's some good parts to like the mental aspect. Because you seem to just take it as a kind of all a learning experience. It's all fun. It's, you know, this is part of the journey. You know where you're going and you're training every day. So, so how do you think the, like, the visualization, what kind of ways do they get you to visualize? Do you kind of just meditate on seeing yourself in the Olympics, for example? Do you go away and journal your goals and review how the sessions went? You know, do you use tools to kind of record yourselves and watch it back to look at your skills? How, how you know, because how have you become so good? So I think it's um, all, like a little bit of all that you said, really. Like I, I know, I listen I, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, we do that. Yeah, we do that. So I think <laughs> it depends also a little on what time we are in, in competition and in season. Because I think in off season we do a lot um, visualization on actually the movement that we are training in training, in like actual beach volleyball practice. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if we do a lot of surf, we try to like really get the surfs in with visualization as well to like make that automatic to emphasize it kind of what we're learning to also make that more repetitions as you can do in training. Kind exactly. Of. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, and then in, in season, we actually do a lot of um, team building visualization yeah. that we actually like think that we are on the court together. Okay, how's the atmosphere? How is, how, how is the game going? How do we start off? How's the mood? How's the energy? Mm -hmm. And just to like put the positivity in there before a game, which I think it's, it's really cool because... We do it, for example, one night before the, the actual competition. And you already, because you have that in mind, get into it with a like positive energy. But I think there's still, with the mental part, a lot, a lot to do for us. Because we started two years ago and like we um, improved 
a lot, but we're both really like, how should I say, ambition, uh, ambitious and like outcome orient oriented still. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think there's still a lot to do that we really take it as part of learning because we're both, I guess we want to become better and stronger every day. And if you don't see the like result right away, you start doubting sometimes as well, but we really try to like focus on the learning part more than the outcome part, because if you learn it correctly and if you have a good process, the outcome will come organically, basically. Yes. And also what I think is. When you start off doing a sport, let's say, and doing it comp in competition, you're usually kind of young and, you know, stakes aren't that high and you just do it because it's fun and you're good or whatever. But uh, as you grow older and as you come closer to your goal, I think the stakes just get higher and higher and higher every year. And every year you take it more seriously, you invest more in it, more you, your focus is more on and the more you do that, the more you're going to expect to like win and be better and all that stuff. So I think it's really important just to still see the process and to understand that sometimes you're not going to get much better, maybe for a year or two, and then, and then you're going to explode. You never know when, like how the learning curve is going to be for you. Um, and I think that's a part that we can still really much improve in and um, learn, but yeah, we're getting there, I would say. <laughs> I love it. You're the youngest team on the circuit. You know, you've you've recently turned professional and, you know, you're really progressing well. And to have this kind of mindset at such a young age is awesome. You know, I know people who would have crumbled at your age if they'd, if they'd lost in the semifinals or whatever it was or had to have surgery. And you guys just seem to go, oh, well, you know, next step, next step, next step. Ooh. It's amazing. And how do you find that transition from playing on the court with your friends to playing in front of thousands of fans because you've got a video app where you put in, I think it was Vienna where you were playing and the crowd were roaring at every touch and the, you know, you panned round and there was thousands of people there. How would you find the, the media side of this, the, the fame, the popularity, the inspiration you're giving to young girls and young boys who want to get into volleyball? How do you cope with that? So, I think um, if you're an Austrian volleyball player, you know, like this big tournament in Austria, the big beach volleyball tournament in Austria. And when I was 13, this was like my, like my vision and my goal to stand in such a crazy stadium in such a crazy atmosphere. So mm. for me personally, it was like such a big step this year that we, actually got to play there for the first time ever so it was like a childhood dream come true it's and amazing. that just it it just motivated me so much to like get on the court to play in front of my friends and family to maybe inspire people by what we're doing by how much energy and how much effort we put into the sport we love that i didn't really like think about it i actually just played and enjoyed the stadium and then enjoyed like playing my best beach volleyball yeah yeah definitely I I loved it too I think for me personally it's harder if there's only me and my expectations because I know my expectations are always going to be higher than the expectations of outside people so mm. for me the crowd because first I thought oh am I going to be nervous how is it going to be like the first time in front of like such a big crowd but actually, I realized that it's not like that at all. It, motiva it motivates me a lot. And my own expectation is sometimes the thing that like bothers me more or that um, I don't know how to explain it, but that's worse than like a lot of people and all that outside pressure because it's all my expectation is always going to be higher than what people think or expect of me. So I yeah. think that was an interesting thing to like learn also about us or about myself. And yeah, we love the fans. Like playing in Austria is the greatest thing. And when everybody comes there just to cheer for you, like it's a very special feeling. I love how you, you know, you're talking about achieving childhood goals and stuff. And then, you know, you won the Austrian Open. Was it the first year you competed? Uh, you're now wanting to go to the Olympics. The world's your oyster, and I love you can see this mental strength that you both have. 
and you're your, your own harshest critic. And I think that's something we all struggle with, isn't it? It's time for a quick break. There are millions of potential products to buy. So how do you know which ones are worth your hard-earned money? Simple. You go to nextlevelguy.com slash affiliates and explore those that will transform and improve your life. You'll find deals, listener exclusives, and special offers with some great companies. Recommendations are 100% honest and only on items Ian has tried or believes in. The companies showcased will make you a better man in all areas of your life. Simply go to nextlevelguy.com slash affiliates and level up. But the sport is very demanding. You know what I mean? Running on sand, diving on sand, getting up, you know, point after point. You travel worldwide. You train two times a day. How do you recover from this? You you know, you were doing physical therapy earlier. How do you foam roll? Do you use massage balls? Do you, you know, how do you keep yourself in such great shape to survive beach volleyball? Because it looks tiring to watch it. Never mind <laughs> play it. <laughs> So I think it's it has to be a good balance with um, training and recovery, actually. Because especially when you're training in Rio with 35 degrees sweater, it's really, really demanding for the body, how, how you said it. So we use, like, everything you said, foam roll, of course, then massages, our physical therapy therapist is here. Um, sleep, of course, sleep, good food, healthy food. And we just, it's also like a little bit of trial error, actually, because everyone is okay. individual. Everyone has individual needs for their recovery and what is best for them and how do you feel and how's the recovery and how's like uh, everything about your body because your physical health or your physical performance is the, the most important thing. So yeah. you kind of have to get that balance right, you know? Yeah, I agree. I think we have so many like tools here or like at home that we like to try out because we really yeah we love to like try what recovery helps most like i have cups here i don't know if you if you know this it's like also for for tissue recovery and um we also have a fitness tracker that tracks everything so it's really just trying out but what helps me most i mean i know it's really basic but it's just enough sleep like I can try every tool in the world. If I if I don't have enough sleep, I'm gonna be grumpy and I'm not gonna be on my best performance. I everybody needs different amounts. Like Ronya could be fit after like seven and a half hours of sleep. I need like nine hours. So I think just trying that out on yourself and understanding what helps you specifically most is like a big part because there's so many tools and recovery devices out there. Like there's literally hundreds, but some maybe work on you. And don't work on others and the other way around. So I think that's a lot of trying out. Um, but hydration and sleep are for me like the top two things. You're tired and you can't move. And so, yeah, I think that's like a big part to just understand how to recover well, well and to give your body also the rest that it needs. It's, you know, it's tiring just listening to it sometimes, you know, like the amount of stuff that you have to go through and then people are asking you for interviews and to do all these sorts of things. And it's amazing that you can just, you've got this consistency, you've got this dedication. So how have you found it? Like, what's the, the idea for the brand? How do you want to, once you've been to the Olympics and won the gold, you know, how what do you want to do? What's the future hold for you guys? How do you want to expand it? Is there a plan for the the Klinger volleyball brand? You know, or do you just enjoy playing together and you know just seeing what you can do and chasing your dreams? Yeah. So first of all, our idea was because of for, when we started the Instagram page, um, we were like, okay, if we actually want to do an Instagram page, we don't want it to be just a basic beach team page where you like post updates and that's it. We want to have something like special, something different. Because if we want to do it, we want to do it 100% and not just like keep people updated and have it like very basic. That's what we didn't want at all. And that's why we first came up with like these ideas, like we'd work on Wednesday or just some other ideas that could set us apart. And um, yeah, we, we had really a lot of fun, like just creating all that and learning by doing because uh, right now we also do all our like social media and all our sponsorship, all our... Um, 
branding basically by ourselves. And um, I mean, I studied it at university and Ronnie has been taking some classes too. And we're just kind of implementing what we learn and see what goes well and what <laughs> doesn't go well. That's really been our whole approach. And yeah, we just want to keep doing that and post interesting things and not just gen generic things. And um, we want to play together for a long time, for as long as we can really. Um, and make the Olympics and what's after, we really have no clue. And we don't even think that far. But um, I don't know, as I know us, I think we're, we're for sure going to stay in like the in, the in the sport area because we've been doing that really our whole lives. I think since we were little kids and all, like little toddlers, we played sports and our parents are both extremely sporty. So I think that's just a thing that will continue for us for a lifetime. Um, yeah, but what happens after for me, like, I really don't know yet. Um, and we're, we're going to figure it out together, I think. <laughs> I, think so I think there's still time like to develop that brand, which first comes like, okay, we're a beach volleyball team, a professional beach volleyball team that wants to involve, that wants to go to the Olympics. And we can see like what happens with that brand, like how we develop, how we evolve, how, what opportunities we get for the brand. So I think it's like, but trying out and like waiting for the development. Yeah. I love it. I love how you're just like, oh, we started university. Oh, I'm going to go to the Olympic. You know, it's, <laughs> you've just got that drive. You can see that this mindset, this, the strong mindset of like, then we're going to take the world by storm. We're going to build our brand. And I, I love it. That's why I was so keen to have you on because you both yeah. seem so <laughs> focused and all, like you've built this strong unit. You've got the, the right people in place what advice would you give to people who are listening who want to get into volleyball what would you recommend to people who are just wanting to take up as a hobby or who want to get further you know find sponsorships and things like that i think for people who just want to begin is like find um a good environment um, a good group to train with that motivates you that cheers you on because i think that's how we both got into it was just like by the idea that a team is such a cool thing to have because when, when we grow, grew up, we both did professional skiing and it's so like cutthroat and we were only used to that. And then when we started volleyball and it was the whole team aspect of having fun that just kind of opened up a completely new door for us. And I think for uh, beginners or for people just trying to pick it up as a hobby, that's like the best advice to just have a cool environment, a cool group to play it with because then you're going to be motivated no matter what, if you have people you like around you. And, and for professional players and sponsorship, it's sponsors, finding sponsors is going to be really like difficult and you're going to want to give up at some point. I, <laughs> I promise you that because it's so much uh, work. And then maybe you get one sponsor out of like hundreds and hundreds of emails or phone calls you've had. I think we already wanted to give up like yeah, 10 like, times like a lot of stuff. <laughs> but then I promise what usually happens is out of um, all these opportunities or out of all these emails or whatever, there's going to be one chance maybe and you're going to get it at some point and it's going to take time. But there's always going to be one uh, lucky moment maybe even where somebody even picks you up maybe that you didn't even plan with. Yeah. And um, that's going to make it totally worth it. And also just put yourself out there. Like when we um, started like one or two years ago, trying to find sponsors, we just every ev ev event we got an invite to, we tried to go just so people get to know us and maybe people remember us or you never know who you're going to meet and you never know who's standing next to you. And yeah, I think that that helped us a lot yeah. to just, whatever sports invite we got we got to other to see other games or to go to galas or something like that um just go and try to talk to people and network and you never know who knows somebody who knows somebody who could <laughs> potentially be a sponsor so really? yeah i think that that are the most important tips and just don't give up yeah and i think for sponsorship um two is to like get connections that as story said and you have to have something, how should I say, a little extraordinary. You have to find the passion in something that you're doing and really like put it out there and really show like the world what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe also one tip for like getting or being a 
or wanted to be a professional is to set goals because then you can actually see the goals and see the steps you're making and see if and how you're achieving it. And it takes a lot of pressure off you if you actually achieve that goal then. Mm -hmm. And I think another thing with the, the sponsorship, because that's really a part we've spent a lot of energy and time on these last couple like years and months really, is um, kind of find your niche too, because you have to have something that sets you apart. And for us, maybe it was like being outgoing, being crazy, having the weird work at Wednesday that set us apart from other teams like mm -hmm. that. But you have to have something because otherwise, why would a sponsor want you? And usually for sponsors, it's more important that you have something special than mm -hmm. that you are a little bit higher in the world ranking, for example. So it sounds crazy, but sponsors don't care as much about your ranking. I mean, you have to have a certain, you know, level, but as much uh, um, as you are on your ranking, then they do about your personality or how you are, what you can, what values you represent. So I think these are kind of the most important tips I could think of <laughs> right now. I love it. I love it. We've got to talk about weird workout Wednesday. Where did that come from? Where was the inspiration and what's been your favorite ones to do? Because you've done some amazing stuff. You know, you just go into your social media and you know, your eyes are like, what's going on here? <laughs> what, you know, what would you rec What would you say to people to have that fun, that creativity in their work? You know, how, and what would you challenge people to do to have their own weird workout Wednesday? So actually a short lesson on the history <laughs> that actually the weird workout came from my dad. I mean, not, not really the weird workout, but the exercises, because when we were skiers, it's like, as Story said, it's really tough and really like strict everything. So he wanted to bring bring in just some fun and just some fun exercises. And we had so many like in our bags already that we say, hey, why, why just don't just post it and try to have something that sets us apart. If it's a fun video, if it's a video, people can actually try if it's a video where people can engage, interact with us. And I think that that really kind of represents also our character and our personality to do something like crazy, to be yeah. crazy, to be outgoing, to, to do something you would not expect anyone to do, to maybe make people laugh, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that that was a... So it, it started with my dad. It, it stayed in the family. We, we have to get it somewhere from. So I think that's a, that that was a big part that our dad like tried to um, make practices a little more fun and mm -hmm. to bring the fun part into the practices. Yeah, I think that's how that's how it started. Definitely, I think the first exercises we posted so like two years ago were mostly his exercises, and then we started to just got super creative with it um since we were both skiers like we had a couple videos where we were skiing playing volleyball ronnie had one where she was skiing and juggling at the same time so just random things people wouldn't expect the beach team to post or also stuff on the beach court of course and also when we both had like problems with our shoulders we had a lot of like stability shoulder exercises that were super hard and looked absurd so we posted some of those too but yeah, I definitely think my favorite weird work and video was uh, we actually um, made a video of our summer course we took in Rio. We did that once. And um, like two years ago when we went on a training camp here, we took summer lessons and we cut a little video out of it and made it a weird workout. And it's a hilarious video because we both can't dance. <laughs> and what, That's what do you definitely going in the show notes. I'm finding it. It's going in the show notes. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it's really funny. It's a, it's it looks bad. It's so like, funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. We, we, we did so many videos. I think my favorite one is on the trampoline. Trampoline. Yeah. Trampoline. Where I, I think I do some backflips. So Dory and I are playing, um, are like setting the ball back to each other. So that's a really funny one. That's too. a good one. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you've traveled the world you've been to some amazing beautiful places like brazil austria you know you've you've covered the world you train everywhere what has it taught you about travel world culture people around the world 
about yourselves? What have you learned about yourselves through the travel and the experience? So um, I think a really, really big thing that we learned is like actually to, I mean, there are so many beautiful places out there that you got to see. And we saw a lot of it, but we actually with every travel, I um, also appreciate Austria a lot, a lot, because we have such like good quality of life, good standard, drinking water, that water Mm -hmm. that you don't have to worry about, which every time when I come home, it's like my safety place. (laughs) So like it. Um, that's right, like a really big thing that I appreciate home a lot. But I mean, I love traveling. I love being on the tour. I love learning new cultures. I think it's every country you go, the people are always a little bit different. Mm-hmm. And that's so interesting to see how you, you have to interact. You have to connect on a different level with different people. And that's like so beautiful of life to like meet and connect with other cultures and other countries. Yeah, and I think it definitely made me even more outgoing and trying to understand other cultures. And I think it's, I mean, I kind of do it through food a little bit. Like I like to try out places all over the world. Like so it's good. Have. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. And um, also their culture, because for example, here in Brazil, everybody is super chill and like, one thing that would be crazy in Austria, like if you're at the cashier in the supermarket, people like talk to the cashier. They, they're they super chill in Austria. It's like, dum, 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 and you're done, you know? Like it's so fast paced. And if you're not done or away with your bags in like two seconds and people stare at you and they're like, what's wrong? Why are you taking so long? And here like everything is chill. Like the whole... um. The whole life is so much more relaxed and it's like cool to see because I think in Europe or in Austria, for example, everything is like stressed and everybody's like always busy and always doing things. And just here in Brazil, it's completely different. And you see that in different places, it's it's a different pace of life. And um, yeah, that's super interesting for me to see and especially the people and how they how they are to you if they're more like, outgoing and open-minded or if they're more like shy and um yeah i think that's that's a cool thing to to see about traveling the world and it definitely helps you as a player as a person because you know you grow by all these different cultures like learning to dance doing the samba you know <laughs> doing all these amazing things and you know you you become a better player so you can pass that on you work better together because you've had these experiences together and you also are going to be inspiring other people by showing these amazing things you're doing i think it was was it the the danish team that one this might be a slightly left field question was it the danish team that refused to wear the bikini briefs in the olympics what's your opinions about the uniform what do you think, how do we remove sexism from women's sport where it should be about the performance, not about how you look? Oh, that's a good question mm-hmm. because our work uniform is a bikini. So there's, there is always going to be this little part of sexism in our sport. And mm-hmm. we also like got confronted with it but i think you should be able to wear what makes you feel mo- most comfortable if you don't feel comfortable wearing a bikini while playing beach volleyball then you shouldn't be forced to wear it because that's not that's that shouldn't be the background and the intention of the sport of the passion you do for me personally if i play in rio de janeiro with 35 degrees and i wear something I wear a long sleeve or something longer than a bikini. It's just going to be so hot and so like uncomfortable Mm. uncomfortable for me to play and to move. But I think sexism is still a big part in a lot of um, women athletes sports that if we have the chance to like speak out about sexism, we should do it. But on the other hand, it's my work uniform. It always was beach volleyball and bikinis or short clothes just go together we play in the sand it's really really hot it's really really physically um demanding so for me i feel comfortable playing in the bikini and you should be able to wear what you feel most comfortable in playing your sport 
No, I definitely agree because it's something like I would hate to think that you know young girls are not wanting to go into the sport because of what they have to wear. Yeah. And I yeah. love that the the I think it was the Danish team they stood up and said, "No, we're going to wear what makes us athletically better. You know, we're not going to yeah. just follow because that was the rules." And I think that inspired a lot of people saying, "We don't need to stand for this. We can step up and do it." And it's yeah. great to see that it's inspiring more people. Like there was um, a few Muslim players who were allowed to wear a hijab while they're playing. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing was amazing. You know, it's we're breaking down all these silly rules and cultures that we had, and it's great to see. And this is why I love how you're using social media to show the world how awesome you two are and the brand and what you're going to do. Thank um, you. So I mean, I, I could talk to you for hours, and I know we're over a time limit, but. What would you want people to take from this? If you had a message or you know somebody to follow you to become a new fan, which I know you're going to get a heap of, what would you say? What would you want them to take as a message from this? So I think for me, it's that you can always take something, take a learning experience for everything you do. If you feel down, if you have a setback, but you will get back stronger, take this as a learning experience on how to act the next time. And for me personally, I mean, I have the best shop in the world and I, I could choose, of course, I have the privilege to choose, but you always, if you find something that's your passion, if you find something where you have your goals and the drive, then for me, that just makes me happy. So my passion is my life. So make your life your passion, kind of. <laughs> yeah, for me, for me, it's if you have something that's, uh, worth a lot to you whether it's a passion is it a sport is it a job whatever it is you have to work hard to improve and to get the best you can be in that field and I think that's the the main principle of my life or, or what I believe in is that you need to work hard and when you work hard you're gonna improve a lot and you're gonna um, achieve your goals and you you have to really believe in that and yeah, I think that that would be my message. <laughs> you're both only twenty, uh, early twenties, and you're, you know, you've got this mindset. You're doing these amazing things. You're training in Brazil. You know, you're taking the world by storm. COVID mm -hmm. can get to, you know, you're you guys are doing it all, and you're going to become superstars. And I know you're going to be on the Olympics soon. You know, you're beating teams who qualified for the Olympics here. You know, you're coming out of surgeries and becoming stronger athletes and you're getting the mindset ready. You're going to do fantastic. How can people keep in touch for companies who want to sponsor you? How can we, you know, follow you on social media, find your website, that sort of thing? Um, thank you, first of all. That's really, really nice. And um, yeah, on Instagram, we are Decklingers. So it's it's really easy. We also have a website. It's also Decklingers.at uh, for Austria. And um, yeah, really just get in contact with us on DM or uh, through the website. It's really super easy. We also answer to like our followers and DMs if they have any questions about our life or even about on how to become better or improve. We, we, it makes us always happy to just talk to people in our community and, and answer questions. So don't be shy and just reach out and we're definitely going to get back to you. And yeah. Thank you, thank you so, so much. Well, that's it for another week. And thank you for listening. It's now time to take what you've learned and use it to develop and enhance your life with the key points mentioned. Listen, try it, embrace it, use it, and crush it. Now's your time to hit that next level in your life. If you liked this episode, then please leave a comment on the show notes or a review of the show on your podcast platform. Everything helps evolve the show. Until next week, keep seeking the next level in your life.